this lesson, we're going to talk about the geometric mean theorems involving the altitude and the leg. And we're going to go through this video in three parts. The first part, we're going to just talk about how to use the formulas. We're going to do three problems involving the altitude. Then we're going to do three problems involving the leg. And then at the very end, the third section, we're going to talk about why these theorems actually work and where they come from and how to derive them again if you want to understand that at a deeper level. So let's dive in. So the first thing we want to realize here is that when you have a right triangle and you drop an altitude, what ends up happening is you end up with these three triangles, the small triangle, medium triangle, and this overall triangle. And there's some relationships that develop because these are similar triangles that we can set up some proportions. And you probably remember from Earlier in math, when you learned about the cross multiplying, we call it the cross product. And basically what it is is that this diagonal multiplied together equals this diagonal multiplied together. The proper name for that was actually the means extremes property. And the means are like these two guys right here, and the extremes are these two guys right here. And so what we say here is that the altitude is the geometric mean of A and B. So what that means is this altitude is the geometric mean of the two parts of the hypotenuse that it's dividing it up into. So that's the theorem that we're going to work with first in these first three problems. So for number one, you can see that here's our altitude. It's a right triangle. We're dropping that altitude. The altitude x is the geometric mean of the two parts of the hypotenuse that it splits it up into. Then we can use that cross multiplying or cross product or means extremes property, however you want to call that. And you're going to get x times x is x squared equals 2 times 8, which is 16. And then if we take the square root of both sides, you can see that that altitude x is going to be 4 units. Okay, so for example number 2, here we're actually solving for this little part of the hypotenuse, okay, and they're giving us the altitude but we can still use this altitude geometric mean theorem. We would set it up like this. We'd say, okay, our altitude five is the geometric mean of the two parts of the hypotenuse that it's splitting up into. So that's x and four. Then when we do our cross product, you can see we have four times x is equal to 25. And if we divide both sides by four, you can see that x is coming out to 25 fourths. And then the third example here with the altitude theorems is you can see we're actually looking for this other part of the hypotenuse right here, uh, and they're giving us the altitude in this whole hypotenuse. Here what you want to do is, again, use the altitude geometric mean theorem, but if this whole hypotenuse is 10, this part is x, how long is this piece right here? Well, that would be the total 10 minus this part we don't want, x, and that's going to leave us with 10 minus x. So now we can set this up and say that our altitude 4 is the geometric mean of this part of the hypotenuse and this part of the hypotenuse. So 10 minus x and x. So now we can cross multiply, do that means extremes property, and you can see that we've got, uh, let's see, x times 10 minus x is equal to 4 times 4, which is 16. We can distribute the x. We're getting a 10x minus x squared is equal to 16. Let's go ahead and get everything on one side of the equation and set it to zero. So I'm going to add x squared over here, so that makes that positive x squared. I'm going to subtract 10x, and the 16 is already on the right, so that's plus 16 is equal to zero. Now what we can do is we can factor this and set the factors equal to zero. So if we factor this, it's going to factor to x minus 8 times x minus 2. If you need to, you can go back to some of my factoring videos to learn more about factoring, but you can see negative 8 and negative 2 multiply to positive 16, but the inside negative 8x and the outside negative 2x add up to the middle negative 10x. So now if we set x minus 8 equal to 0, you can see that x is going to be equal to 8, and if we set x minus 2 equal to 0, you can see that x is going to be equal to 2. So essentially you can see that if I put 8 in here, this length could be 2, right? And then this other part would be 8. Or if we put 2 in here, this part could be 8 and the other part could be 2. So let's go ahead and take a look now at the leg 
geometric mean theorems. Okay, now let's talk about how to work with the leg theorem, okay? So the leg theorem, we've got this leg of the right triangle and we have this leg of the right triangle. I just called this one leg number one and leg number two. And what you wanna remember with the leg theorem is that the leg is the geometric mean of the whole hypotenuse and the part of the hypotenuse that's adjacent to that leg, closest to that leg. So if you're dealing with leg number two, then you'd say the leg number two is the geometric mean of the whole hypotenuse length and the part of the hypotenuse next to that leg, B. So let's go through three examples so you can see how this works. So for number four, I can see I've got that right triangle. I can see I've got that altitude. And so what I'm gonna say is that this leg here, X, is the geometric mean of the whole hypotenuse, so I'll have to add these together to get 12, and the part of the hypotenuse that's adjacent to that leg, which is four. Now if we cross multiply, cross the equal sign, you can see we're getting x squared is equal to 48, and you can see that 48 is really like, um, let's take the square root of both sides, so we can see that x is equal to the square root of 48, and the square root of 48 is really 16 times three, and the square root of 16 is four. So this is coming out to uh, four square root of three for the length of our leg. Now for number five, you can see this is the leg that we're trying to solve for. And so we would say that's this leg number two theorem. You can see leg two is the geometric mean of the whole hypotenuse and the part of the hypotenuse adjacent to that leg. So what this one's gonna look like is you're gonna have uh, Leg number two is the geometric mean of the whole hypotenuse, which is 11, and the part of the hypotenuse that's adjacent to that leg. Again, we're just gonna cross multiply across the equal sign. That's gonna give us x times x, x squared is equal to 11 times nine, 99. Take the square root of both sides, and you can see that, uh, let's see, what does that come out to? Well, let's do this. Square root of 99 is nine times 11 and we know that the square root of nine is three, so that's gonna be three square root of 11. And for number six now, this problem here, they're giving us this leg of the right triangle, the whole hypotenuse, but we really need the part of the hypotenuse that's adjacent to that leg, right? So we're using this theorem right here. So leg number one, the two root two, is the geometric mean of the whole hypotenuse, which is x, and the part of the hypotenuse adjacent to that leg. So if this whole thing is x and this part right here is two, this must be x minus two, the total minus what we don't want. So that's x minus two. Okay, now if we cross multiply across that equal sign, what do we get? Well, we get x times x minus two equals two root two times two root two. Two times two is four, square root of two times square root of two is two, four times two is eight. And then if we distribute, you can see we're getting x squared minus 2x equals 8. Let's get everything on one side of the equation by subtracting 8 and setting it to 0. And then we'll factor and set the factors to 0. So this factors to x minus 4 and x plus 2 because negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 4x and positive 2x adds up to the negative 2x. And then if we set these factors equal to 0, and solve, you can see if we add four to both sides, x equals four, or here we get x equals negative two. Now, could this really be a negative two length? No, so this is an extraneous solution. So it's just gonna be x is equal to four, and you got it. So let's take a look next about understanding where these formulas come from, how you can you know, get them back and drive them if you ever get stuck and you forget the formulas. So let's talk about that next. So let's label the angles in this right triangle. So we've got this right triangle, we drop an altitude. Let's call this angle here in the lower left corner theta. That means that this angle here has to be 90 minus theta because in a right triangle, the two acute angles have to add up to 90. So say if this was 20, this would have to be 90 minus 20, 70. Or if this was 60, 90 minus 60, 30. So whatever this angle is, this angle has to be 90 minus that angle. That's the complement. But if this is 90 minus theta, this angle has to be theta because together they have to add up to 90, this right angle. Like if this was, uh, let's say this was 40, this would have to be 50 because 40 plus 50 adds up to the 90. But if this angle is theta, this has to be 90 minus theta because these two have to add up to 90 
because this is a right triangle. So what happens is if we take a look at this little triangle, I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to take this medium triangle here. I'm going to take it. I'm going to rotate it. Okay, like a quarter turn. That's going to be this triangle right here. And then if we take this entire triangle, we're going to have to turn it and move it over here like that. Okay, so you can see that what I've done is I've positioned them all in the same orientation such that you've got theta over here and you've got 90 minus theta over here. And all these triangles are similar. So you learned earlier in geometry about uh, the angle-angle similarity theorem, meaning if two angles in one triangle, like for example, see these are both theta, these are both 90. So if two angles in one triangle are uh, congruent to two angles in another triangle, then the triangles are similar and the ratio of the corresponding sides will be proportional. And that's where we get these theorems from. So I'll show you. So for this one, if we were to look at the uh, altitude, we can see that, let's take a look at these two triangles right here. So we can say that the ratio of this side to this side, see A to the altitude, is the ratio of the altitude to B. So all I'm doing is if I slide this triangle over, this side matches up with this side. So the ratio of A to the altitude is the same as the ratio of the altitude to B, this leg to this leg. So that's where the altitude theorem comes from. Now for the leg theorem, let's say leg number one, we would take um, this triangle and the overall triangle. So we would say that the hypotenuse of this triangle matches up with the leg one of this triangle. See hypotenuse, hypotenuse. So hypotenuse to leg one. Okay, that ratio is the same as leg one to A. See leg one to A. We're just matching up the corresponding sides, making a proportion. And the last one, if you compare these two triangles, you can see the hypotenuse in this triangle matches up with the hypotenuse in this triangle, which we happen to call leg two. Okay, that ratio is the same as this leg, leg two, to B. So again, you're just matching up the corresponding sides of similar triangles. So if you ever forget, you can draw that out and draw the three triangles and make a proportion. But these are just designed to be shortcuts. So if you're enjoying the channel and you want to support what I'm doing here on uh, YouTube, consider becoming a channel member. For a few dollars a month, you can support the channel, and I really appreciate that. I also have an Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 video course for sale. You can check those out in the description below if you're interested in that. And if you want to do some more examples with geometric mean, I'll put a video right there. Follow me over there, and we'll get some more practice.